So what are the benefits to moving to a cloud-based system like Azure? Well, the first one that should be pretty obvious is your maintenance is going to be reduced. Even if you choose the baseline services of just having them manage a VM for you or a physical server for you, you don't have to deal with the hardware maintenance. You don't have to make sure that the hardware stays up. You don't have to maintain a hard drive or a physical server somewhere. You don't have to provide electricity or cooling to it. Microsoft will do all of that. In addition, if you use one of the higher level services, such as platform as a service or software as a service, not only will they manage the hardware for you, they'll manage the software as well. So they'll make sure that hot fixes are applied and they'll make sure that before they actually spin up a new system with a hotfix applied that your server actually runs on it so that your application isn't disrupted if they happen to apply that hotfix. You don't have to do any of that. Microsoft will take care of that. Maintenance is included. The second reason is you get better security. Microsoft will make sure that all security patches are applied. They'll manage the firewall for you and they'll take care of monitoring that system to ensure that there's no intrusions. Third, we get hybrid deployment. So if you're thinking, well, I can't afford to put all my data in the cloud because I have confidential data that I can't allow other systems to hold, that's okay. You can put some things in Azure and keep other things in your corporate infrastructure that you manage and maintain locally. Best, you can even connect these two through private VPN tunnels to allow your infrastructure to hit the Azure services as if they were part of your corporate network. And you can make sure to control that pipeline so that you can secure it effectively to ensure that the Azure systems can't reach into your data center to get a hold of that confidential data. And then finally, Azure has a 99.9% .9 uptime service level agreement. Now obviously, you're going to get what you pay for. So the SLA is going to be dependent upon the level of service you decide to subscribe to and how much you're paying for it. Now as you saw, there are a ton of services that you can use. We're going to focus on Azure App Services. And it provides several different application types, each of which is intended to host a specific kind of workload. For example, we have web apps. That's sort of the central part of this. And that allows us to host websites and web applications. We also have mobile apps for hosting mobile app backends, where we can expose data, use authentication services, and support cross-platform push notifications. API apps allow us to host cloud-based APIs in the form of web services, logic apps to automate our business processes using a workflow sort of orchestration engine, and backend functions that allow us to write server-side logic to manipulate our server-side databases reacting to events that are occurring within the cloud. We're going to focus predominantly upon mobile apps as we move forward because we're talking about Xamarin applications. But be aware that you can build these other styles of applications on top of Azure App Services as well. Scale them up or out manually or automatically. Host them anywhere inside of Microsoft's data center and get a full SLA to guarantee uptime. From the client perspective, Microsoft provides SDKs to be able to get to pretty much every conceivable client that you'd want to use the service from. For example, we can use .NET, C Sharp, or VB.NET, or any other .NET language to be able to hit Azure. We can use common web technologies such as Node.js, PHP, and Ruby. Or we can even use native SDKs that sit on top of iOS and Android so that I can use Objective-C, Swift, or Java.